I'd like to give you a brief introduction to the thesaurus that we're going to be working on in this, uh, in this exercise. This is a thesaurus that was submitted to a course at the University of Washington in uh, 2009 by some students who are listed there, and they gave their permission for me to use it as an example um, of uh, kind of a standard thesaurus. So I'm going to look at this mostly from an end-user standpoint. I might lap into architect talk every once in a while, but what I want you to do as you listen to me speak is continually think how would I structure the information behind this user view, this uh, rendering of the thesaurus, so that I could create this rendering? What's the underlying information structure that's going to allow me to create uh, this end user view? And we'll begin with the title. And this is kind of an easy question. What's the underlying structure that would allow me to put a title on the screen? Obviously, from all the things we've done in the course so far, you would say, well, there's a title element somewhere, right? No big deal there. Okay, then we have a set of a set of um, authors, and then we have an introduction. The plus and minus button here, you don't have to worry about. That's created by a, um, a JavaScript. The only thing you have to know is that, that JavaScript is actually being called down from the World Wide Web, and so if you don't have a connection, this button isn't going to work because the script actually resides on the web. So I can open that that introduction, and now we see that it's lots of paragraphs, that it's got headings, it's got bullet lists, etc. Um, hopefully a term is jumping into your head right now for how to describe that architecturally. But from the standpoint of um, the end user, this is an introduction. It tells what the thesaurus is for. It's a wine, th th a wine thesaurus. It talks about how it's structured, the terms, um, preferred terms versus lead-in terms, uh, the parts and the, and the rules. The, and then it talks about the two major parts of the thesaurus, the alphabetical index and the classified schedule alphabetical index showing all the um, preferred terms in alphabetical order with various kinds of information underneath them and the classified schedule which shows a hierarchical view of all of the terms in the thesaurus. Okay so that's getting us down to the uh, end of the introduction. Now we have an alphabetical index which we can close up and a classified schedule that we close up. Um, and let's start with the alphabetical index. So in the alphabetical index um, we have index terms alphabetically organized. So the first in an alphabetical um, sort is the 100 point scale. Now notice that this is in italics. Italics means that it's a non-preferred term. It's a term that we're using to lead you to the correct term. And so under every italicized term you should see this phrase use, meaning instead of 100 point scale use 100 point scale. Spell it out. And notice that's a link. Notice that, that if I click on this I get to the 100 point scale entry and notice that I also get this corresponding use for. In other words, use 100 point scale spelled out for 100 point scale um, as, uh, as digits. Okay, and then down to the next term. Next term is acidity. Um, acidity is in bold, notice, and that means that it's a, uh, that means that it's a preferred term. It's a, it's a term that we will say is an actual term used to index wines and so the term acidity is uh, kind of an accepted or a preferred term and we know that because it's bold in the alphabetical index. It's uh, got some headings underneath it or actually it's one heading underneath it and that one heading is called broader terms. Broader terms are terms that are above acidity and uh, encompass the notion of acidity. So a broader term is balance. If we go to balance, notice we'll see narrower terms. If, if, a, if balance is a broader term for acidity, then acidity should be a narrower term for balance, right? That makes sense. And you should be thinking already of, of ways that you could make that happen inside of a schema in an instance. And in addition, uh, tannins is also a, 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 a narrower term for balance. Now, balance is a nice one because it shows us some, some other things. For example, scope notes. Scope notes is kind of like a description. It tells you when and where you would, um, you would apply this term and, and any kind of uh, anything else that needs to be explained about the term. Um, I think description is probably an adequate way of, of, of characterizing that idea of scope notes. Okay, so um, we're, we've pretty much run out of, of uh, subheads. We have the scope notes one that we just talked about, broader terms which you talked about, narrower terms that we just talked about, and let me find one more. If we go down here to blended wines, we see that blended top wines is a preferred term because it's bold. We know that it's used for the term claret, clariet, and it's used for the term claret. And obviously clariet and claret are two different spellings. One's uh, apparently the French spelling, the other one's the English spelling. 
for something we actually believe is blended wines. That's how we're going to use it in this thesaurus. One more heading to talk about here, a related term, and that related term is blending. So if you're looking at blended wines, you might also want to look over here at this term blending. Now when I go to blending and I look under blending and I see what the related terms are, what should I see there? I better see the, the I should better see the word um, I better see the word blended wines. And here it is, it's the next term down. It has scope notes, use for. So um, there's a, a non-preferred term called assemblage. And um, and that is a, a term that is uh, that you might have in your head, but we're not using in this course. Instead, we're using the word blending. Now, unrelated terms. One last thing to kind of think about here is that the term the, re the term blending is related to the term blended wines. Right? We saw that here, blending here. So we have a reciprocal relationship, and it should be true as well. But blending is also related to tested taste and vintage, whereas blended wines is not related to those things. So that I think is kind of a judgment call. That's a, a maybe a stylistic um, question. If all of these things are, are, are synonyms to each other, then you would expect that blended wines would be related to all of these. If, and on the other hand, blending has a different sense than blended wines, which I think you can see that it does, then maybe it's, a, it's appropriate for blended wines to be related to blending but blending to be related to things other than blended wines like taste and vintage. Okay, well that takes us to um, that takes us out.